Hey guys, uh, so apologies for not getting this done earlier. I, I keep uh, getting distracted, but um, let me go over what this, so this is the most messiest one, I believe. And so from this, I think you can probably figure out just about everything else. Um, okay, so uh, I'm on the beach uh, data set that the, the original file, it says copy of master compiled, edited February, 2019. Okay, so beach is obviously the, bre the beach that it was done, Broad Beach, Carpinteria, State Beach, El Matador, et cetera. Obviously the year the survey was done. Now sometimes there is more than one survey per year. Um, uh, again, and, and here you can see here, we, we, we both mentioned that there is a, a full um, assessment of beach conditions and a synoptic one. We actually have a third one. So full would be everything is done. All the uh, emerita are collected for parasite diagnostic. We do uh, coring for in fauna, et cetera. Then we have what we call a rapid. Uh, well, it, the name has evolved over the years, but we're, I think we're now calling the rapid, which is the, um, the, the full, but not doing uh, the in faunal cores. So not doing the stuff we need to spend a lot of time at the beach. The third, which is sort of a, a further subset of the rapid, if you will, is the synoptic survey. The synoptic survey is done on Father's Day weekend. So it's all, it's one day. Uh, all the sites are done in the one day. Um, we, they're all surveyed between 10 and two. And they are, um, uh, done uh, with a focus on primarily the things that change a lot. So that's focused on the number of cars that are in the parking lot and the number of people that are on the beach. That's the, that's the primary purpose of the synoptic. So it's not necessarily doing rack and all that kind of stuff. There's actually three broad categories there. The rapid, the, f the full, the rapid, and the synoptic is what I would how I would now characterize them, even though we might not have used those terms earlier on in the database. Okay, uh, and, and that's what, so that's what this is uh, supposed to refer to. Um, okay, um, observers who, who did it, um, and then if there's a rapid observers who did it, again, beach, repeat it again, state, California, most of the stuff is for, this, uh, we've switched to now we use a, um, an app, and so because we're trying to make this be more general, there's a, there's a stop in there to say what state it is. So in the future, if we start going to other states, there's a place for it. But basically, everything here is California. Um, the date the survey was done, or the date the rapid survey was done, um, the time it was started. Uh, phone rang there for a second. Sorry, I had to pause. Um, okay, so uh, anyway, uh, uh, what the tide is at the start of the survey in feet, and if it was rising or falling. Uh, um, it, and then again, some of the stuff we used to do, uh, we don't, I don't know how we really use this, but um, there's just general weather conditions, wind conditions. Really the only thing the wind is probably useful for is if it's super, super windy, it could well affect the number of birds, possibly the number of attendees that were out, or if it was raining or something of that factor, but, but sort of, sort of cloudy or partly cloudy or, you know, it, it's unclear how that plays into anything. Uh, temperature. Um, at the time the survey was started. Um, uh, how wide is the beach uh, in meters? And so this is from the, the access point, so say the bottom of the stairs, to the tide line in meters. Um, wave type, again, we were originally collecting this. We haven't really done much with it. Maybe you guys can create something interesting, but but haven't done with that much with that, but that's uh, spilling, plunging, or um, oh, I can't remember the last one, it was breaking or something. Um, uh, the wave height again, very difficult to estimate. Estimate, and so uh, we we collected it, but we don't really do that anymore. Um, wave direction is uh, either coming directly, perfectly, breaking straight onto the coast in the middle point of the beach survey area or the waves are coming from up coast or they're coming from down coast. Uh, this Southwest isn't really, that's not really you're supposed to be recording. We're supposed to say if it's up or down or perpendicular. Um, okay. And then we have a, a, I assume you guys have the data sheet. If not, I guess I can send you the data sheet. Um, uh, it, it's an electronic one, but I can send you one of the, um, 
PDFs that will maybe make this make sense. But these are uh, critters that we see on evidence of these critters on the surface of the um, sand. So um, we have three types of sand crab. We have uh, evidence of kelp flies, um, hopper, ho um, hopper holes and hoppers. Um, we have, um, we call them hopper holes. They possibly could be some other things, but, but, but evidence of, you know, in fauna, um, uh, sand dollars, uh, basically a, a sandy beach, um, dwellers. The only exception that would be, uh, Valella Valella, which is the by the wind sailor. That's not technically a sandy beach species, but they do wash in at times in very intense numbers. Um, and so they're coming from the open ocean and, and washing up on this on the uh, sandy beach. But we use that as a measure of of in faunal or or at least sandy beach invertebrate uh, uh, diversity. And this is just a sum of how many of those categories uh, we saw at this particular site. Um, okay, then we have uh, algal stuff. Uh, you know what? Let, let me let me hold on. Let, let me call up the data sheet so I can show that to you guys. Okay, you guys. So this is this is the uh, the old data sheet that uh, we used. That again, now things are in the um, in, on an app, on a Survey One Two Three app. But I think this might be helpful for some of these issues. Um, so uh, um, yeah. So let me let me call these up. Okay. So for the shells on the beach that we were talking about, here are the possible all the possible categories: um, sand dollars. So as you say, sand dollar shells, emerita, uh, bleff uh, individuals, pearl crabs, small clams. Small clams are smaller than your uh, pinky fingernail. Large clams are larger than your pinky fingernail. Uh, any kind of snail, any kind of uh, marine snail, um, kelp flies, the by the wind sailor that I mentioned, and uh, evidence of hopper holes, meaning um, in fauna just underneath the surface of the sand. Uh, we were for a while also doing uh, in faunal grabs, which we were also calling um, uh, monster hands. And so these are uh, similar. So we do, um, I believe it's three large scoops of, of the sand to see if we could, again, get closer to what we get from the in faunal cores. Um, and so this is actually digging in the sand, looking for in fauna in the sand. Um, and this was, okay, as with shells on the beach, this is just presence or absence. If you saw a single emerita or emerita shell, that would get circled and that would count. Same thing with the infaunal grabs. Did you see any inside the sand? Uh, emerito, blefs, pearl crabs, herbivorous isopods, carnivorous isopods, um, the big uh, megalarostria, uh, other uh, hoppers, which is a hopper, um, other hoppers, small clam, large clam, olivella, which is a little snail. Um, and snails other than the, the purple olive snail, um, rove beetles, it's other beetle, and then another, um, inver oh, sorry. And then we also have some blood worms and polychaetes and anything else. So again, these were just saw at least one individual got circled here. Um, the only other thing you might see is in, if you have the invertebrate data set, I don't believe Dr. Claire has, mer Dr. Steele has merged this. With our stuff, but these are the types of things we we find when we do the uh, fuller, um, true uh, coring uh, data collection part of the in faunal assessment, which again we've pretty much abandoned now for most uh, annual censusing. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, great. Uh, also, something we added only in recent years after the the refugio oil spill. Is we record tarball sizes, um, and so that is the uh, number of so the largest tarball size we see while meandering around the rack line, uh, maximum diameter, and then the first ten we see what the size what the maximum diameter of those first ten are. We also note if the tar is fresh or weathered. Other uh, categories we've at, added more recently include. Um, uh, just this year was evidence of, or, or how many people are wearing masks, you know, approximate number of people that are wearing masks that we see on the beach, and then any evidence of COVID trash that we see on the beach or, or in the parking lot to the beach. Um, as far as rack, these are our categories for rack. So any seagrass, 
any kelps. These are laminaria, laminariales, uh, brown algal individuals. Other brown algae, algae other than the kelp. Uh, a fleshy red algae. A corallin, so these would be the encrusting or the articulated corallin red algae. And then any, any uh, green algae. Um, yeah. Um, okay, right. Uh, as far as the woody rack goes, we have um, uh, a rundo rack, which is coming down from our coastal uh, our riparian corridors. Uh, driftwood, which we define as wood whose diameter is less than our wrist. And large wood, which would be wood whose diameter is larger than uh, anyone's wrist. Uh, the other sort of large category of things to, to census, these would be our general stressors category. Now, when I've been creating the, the new ecological indicators or playing with them, I've been adding in some other things to this, to this stressor from elsewhere here. So, for example, um, trash can, you know, amount of trash cans added into stressors. But this is for things that we're not counting elsewhere. These are, are they present or not? Uh, mechanized vehicles. So that would most typically be something like a lifeguard vehicle. Again, this is a case where any presence, presence of even one, you circle it and it counts. Um, remote controlled cars, which in some beaches in summertime, we see a fair amount of these on the beach. Uh, drones. Uh, we might be flying our drone about the beach, but we don't count, right? Our cars don't count. Our people don't count. So this would be drones other than ours. I any driftwood structures. These are, um, it suggests one, both there's, there's abundant driftwood on the beach and two people are, are building things for for an extended stay. So that could just be for extended afternoon, um, but often we see these structures used from day to day to day and they, be, they become somewhat permanent and homeless folks also will make significant driftwood structures. Any evidence of homeless folks uh, at or at the beach or in the parking lot of the beach? Um, any evidence of grooming? Any scrapes or berms? These are, this is primarily in the winter time when we have storms coming in, but nevertheless, we, we might see that. And then any wood char, evidence of um, fires. So even though we have very few places that have active fire rings, we do see significant wood char around where people illegally are doing fires on the beach, or at least in some places illegally. Um, another one we have in terms of um, any management, any, any um, conspicuous uh, beach conservation management, um, one is nourishment, evidence of recent nourishment, and uh, plover fencing to restrict people's access to um, those birds. Um, anyway, so th this is our data sheet. I'll, I'll add it to you guys, I'll add it to the uh, drive. So this might also help with stuff. These other things are just for us to keep track of stuff. Did we take a photo from looking at the parking lot? Did we collect tar? And and these are kind of this tough stuff up here is more just sort of bookkeeping type stuff. Okay, um, getting back to what you guys are talking about. Okay, so here we go. So here's our categories of um, rack on the beach. Uh, and then again, the, the number of rack categories. Um, and then these are our stressors here. Um, yeah, okay. Um, so again, I'm not sure why some of this is the way it is, but, but this would be total stressors. So this should be uh, you know, adding up. Uh, in this case, there's one mechanical vehicle. So this guy should be one. This burnt is one. Oh, okay, I guess it. I guess it was. Okay, I'm not. I'm not sure. Oh, I see. Okay, the zero is here. It's because it's so long. I got gotcha. you. Okay, sorry. Um, uh, do you see any dead vertebrates? This would be uh, marine mammals or birds primarily. Is what we're talking about here on the beach. Um, and then if we did what we what you saw. So for example, right here was a dead sea lion juvenile. Birds. Now, birds is another one that's changed significantly over our course of surveying. Initially, we were trying to articulate all the birds. We also initially would do a one-kilometer survey, um, or, or if, we, if the beach was large enough, we did a one-kilometer survey. That's really evolved, and now we just do um, inspections from the point of entry or, or our, our survey area on the beach. We don't go walking for long distances or anything. We also don't worry too much about species identification. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what it's been boiled down to is uh, gulls, how many seagulls you see, how many corvids you see. So this would be uh, crows and ravens. Also, technically, it includes scrub jays, but primarily what we're seeing, you know, 99% of what we're seeing is American crows. So how many crows do you see? 
Uh, how many pigeons do you see? Again, these are, these are, um, while gulls are native, actually all these birds are native here. Um, but they, they're highly associated with people and disturbance. So they're a disturbance philic species. And so gulls are that way, corvids are that way, pigeons are that way. And then we have how many shorebirds did you see? Now shorebirds are mul they're multiple species, etc. But we just say, how many did you see? And you enumerate those. Um, and then any other birds. So this would be pelicans would be another bird. Um, uh, regular uh, passeriformes, regular you know um, uh, birds we'd see around school. Those would be other birds. Um, what else would be other birds? Things like egrets, uh, etc. So um, so those guys would go in here. And then it, and then you know what did we see? You're supposed to articulate that. But again, um, this is it's unclear. It'd be great for you guys to play with this and see if you can come up with something useful. But because we have various people with various bird skills and because we're not all going always at the crack of dawn, um, there might be a person with fantastic birding skills and they might go out there. There might be no birds there. Um, so, so the birds are a problematic, a very important but problematic category for us. I mean, this is total number of birds. Again, after the refugio spill, we basically said, uh, you know, are we seeing fresh tar or weathered tar? Uh, on the beach, fresh tar would indicate a, a very recent arrival on the beach. Whether it is, it's been there um, for at least a, a little bit of time. Um, and then do we collect any tar? Um, this is the back beach. This is one we really probably can better get from Google Earth. Some cases you need that to be on the ground, but by and large, this is one we've gone to maybe doing more uh, uh, remotely than necessarily there in the field. So are there dunes present? Yes, no. Are there um, vegetated dunes present? Yes, no. Are there wetlands behind the, immediately behind those dunes? Yes, no. Is there any ice plant, invasive um, Carpobrotus ice plant, uh, Caltrans ice plant, we call it? Uh, yes or no. Is there a creek uh, that dumps onto the beach, uh, either at our survey site or just immediately adjacent to it? Uh, any evidence of nourishment? Uh, do you see any plover exclosures? Again, these are those columns I just mentioned about uh, additional management efforts. Um, uh, this is one that we, again, originally were doing this and we pretty much, um, this isn't really in our, in our, this isn't a big focus of what we're doing these days, but, um, but this was, uh, is the beach sand or how much of the beach is sand, you know, hundred percent, or is it cobble? Is it bench? That kind of stuff. How much is, is pebble and, and, uh, uh, Cobble is fist size, bigger, fist size or bigger. Pebble is smaller than fist size. Uh, uh, rocks or boulders would be um, bigger than about head size and or uh, is, is something immovable. So if it's a rock bench, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, in the air, but we, we couldn't possibly move it. No one could possibly move it. Um, uh, the, and then this, this next effort was looking at the linear back of the beach where we do our survey. How much is dune? How much is paved uh, areas or parking lots? How much are homes or other human structures? Um, how much is lawn? And how much is riprap? Um, also, if there's a seawall or revetment, and uh, how much are, are straight cliffs? How much is a lagoon? How much is a creek mouth? And how much is a gentle vegetated slope? So this is a, a bit of a hard category, but it's one that's Clearly not, a, clearly not a cliff, but it's also not flat. And so general, it's also not um, uh, a vegetated dune. So this would just be like you know, regular dirt or regular back of the beach, but it's a general gentle slope. Parking, how many parking spaces are in the lot? Now, this is one that you'll need to do some verification on. Um, so uh, the parking spaces shouldn't vary massively, right? So, may, so one, one year it says 29, one it says 30. Okay, yeah, they probably just counted it slightly differently, but 182, um, something else is going on there, so we should double check. Now, in some cases, some things have been opened up. There might've been construction equipment or something like that obliterating uh, the parking spots, but um, we really, this should be a pretty consistent number from year to year, at least, at least most sites, most years. Uh, and then how many cars are parked there? Uh, in the, in the oh, let me go up here. How many cars are parked there in the lot? Let me make this bigger again. Maybe this is too small for you guys. How many cars are parked there in the lot? Uh, how many cars are parked on the road? So this is primarily PCH, but it could also include a frontage road. 
Um, again, this is cars that are clearly or most likely associated with going to the beach. Um, this is, uh, it gets hard in urban areas to know, well, so those cars in the street, are they really going to the beach or what? But we try to do our best. And again, this is really, this, this count really works best on uh, PCH, uh, where there is pretty clear evidence that these people are at the beach. Um, and then the same thing for rapid. Uh, sample collection, again, this is probably not something you guys want to do, although you could actually look at the data if you wanted to, if you want to do some other processing, assuming we get the permission to do that. But this is basically stuff we collected to bring back to the lab. Uh, monster hands is, is, again, that, that term that I was referring to you where we were doing the big um, uh, hand grabs in lieu of doing um, uh, coring. And Dr. Steele's initial data suggests that they, it wasn't very well correlated. So we've, we've kind of passed on this, but, but we do have some data that might be useful for you in, in playing around. Um, okay, photos, photos, photos. Okay, people on the beach. Okay, how many people are sunbathing? Sunbathing is both sunbathing and also our just sort of default category, right? Where if we're not sure where to put them, people go in the sunbathing category. How many people are wading or swimming? Uh, how many people, you know, playing the waves kind of stuff. How many people are fishing? How many people are surfing? Now, this is board surfing um, uh, versus how many people are kite surfing. We have a difference because when people do kite surfing, they have to lay their, um, you know, lay, lay all their lines and everything out across the beach. And at times we've seen them take off and they potentially could have some impact on the beach. So that's why, you know, we, we don't break down surfing into bodyboarding and, and paddle boarding and all these different things. So, but, but we do break this kite surfing out. Um, how many people are basically exercising uh, on the beach? How many people are digging, making sandcastles? These are mostly young kids. How many people are boulder? This is rock climbing. Really, this is bouldering, right? So this is where we have an, a rocky intertidal area. Tide is relatively low. People are out there poking around, disturbing the intertidal stuff mostly. Um, and then doing something else that isn't sunbathing, that is remarkable enough that we should note it as something different. Uh, and the same thing during the rapid assessment, uh, dogs, how many dogs are on leash, uh, on the beach and how many dogs are off leash at the beach? Um, uh, stairs, how many stairs, uh, are, uh, you know, stairways to access the coast, public stairs to access the coast, either coming from the street or coming from a parking lot. Uh, and then how many stairs <clears throat> are private coming down from private residences? Generally speaking, they're, they're locked gates. And represent a private access to the beach that would no longer be allowed um, these days, but these have been grandfathered in since before the Coastal Act. Uh, gates, same thing. So how many gates are there on uh, uh, public gates that people have to go through or potentially could be locked uh, if they wanted to get to the beach? And then how many are on private land? Uh, lifeguard towers. So how many manned lifeguard towers, meaning at least one lifeguard there? Uh, generally speaking, that means the flag is flying. And how many lifeguard towers are there, but they are empty? Um, <clears throat> how many towers? Uh, yeah, okay, right. There we did that. Um, fire rings. How many fire rings are on the beach? And Okay, now we have a few categories here where things are not technically on the beach, but they're just off the beach. So they're on the, maybe there's a flat grass area near the um, parking lot or something. So, so we distinguish, we see this uh, at or near, that's what the distinction is. So near would be basically in the parking lot or, or right adjacent to the parking lot. Um, so fire rings, um, trash cans on the beach, near the beach, um, restrooms on the beach proper, in the sand proper versus, you know, in the parking lot or something of that nature. Uh, showers. Uh, are there any camping spaces on the beach? Um, and so this would be, you know, directly you park your car just immediately touching the beach and there's a camping spot right there. Um, and how many near the beach? Uh, picnic tables uh, on the beach, on the sand itself or right adjacent to the sand. Um, okay, this, this, other, this, is not, this, this next one is one we've added relatively recently, just in the last, I don't know, four or five years or so. But this is how many groups are... How many groups are surfing? So this would be a um, large group. This is, we're talking about a surf camp here. We're not talking about a large number of surfers in the water. We're talking about an organized group that is doing this in a cohesive manner. Primarily, these are for young kids. Primarily, these are surf schools or surf camps. They oftentimes, a lot of times, have big 
uh, uh, areas of the beach is staked off where they have their backpacks and things of that nature. And then we also do sometimes see exercise groups. So, so boot camps at the beach, that kind of thing. And, and that would be how many of those groups or perhaps day camps um, uh, in the summertime with kids. Uh, how many volleyball courts are on the beach? Uh, conduits. Okay, so conduits, um, we have a couple things here. We have culverts and conduits. Culverts are large. Culverts would be something that would go under a road and is on the order of, you know, at least probably a foot, two foot diameter kind of thing. Could be even larger. Could, generally speaking, are round, but they could be box culverts as well. This is for transporting floodwaters from one side of, generally speaking, PCH onto the beach. Um, conduits are smaller diameter pipes, and these are sticking out of the cliffs, and these are primarily from private homeowners that overwater their home and want to get that water off because they don't want it to erode the cliff rapidly, so they put a pipe and then it splashes down on the beach and erodes the under, uh, cuts out the undertow of the uh, cliff. Um, that's what that is. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so these next ones are, are these things present or not? And the idea here is, are they so abundant you can see them from far away? So this is, can you see tar, tar balls, or tarring from a distance, yes or no? Um, and then, uh, again, we're now we're getting to the category where we have various uh, levels. And some so this is not a yes, no, this is a, we call this a semi-quantitative uh, value because one is more than zero, but um, uh, two isn't necessarily twice as much as one. Does that make sense? So none is none. Little one is one in this ranking. One is little, meaning very very little. It was present. I see it when I walk, but it's not very much. Some is a moderate about. Three abundant would indicate um, th this is very abundant. So it's it's pretty much everywhere I look, or it's relatively thick in places. That kind of thing. Um, and then we, when I also, when I'm doing this, not everybody does, when I'm doing this, I, I take quantitative pictures of a quadrat on the, on the uh, beach. So I can if later on uh, estimate how much tar is there. This is really more of a baseline issue. So if we have another oil spill, we have a sense of how much tar is routinely on the beach and we can distinguish background from uh, oil spill tar. Uh, it's same thing. Can you see trash? Can you see any trash from a distance? Um, and how much trash do you see? Again, none, little, some, abundant. Uh, do you see any rack from a distance? Um, and then how much rack do you see? None, little, some, abundant. Uh, and then uh, when you stand at the beach and look off to the ocean, do you see any kelp, any kelp beds, any surface kelp beds presenting? Yes, no. Um, and then again, how much? Now, I, I've been messing around with this, uh, looking at the relative amount so that that if there is, there isn't always kelp beds off of all of our beaches. Some of them have sandy bottoms and don't, aren't really capable of supporting kelp beds. But if there is a kelp bed, so first of all, all of our sandy beaches should have some kelp on it, some rack on there. Um, but um, uh, ones that have less kelp immediately adjacent to them or immediately up coast would presumably have a bit, a bit lower level of kelp loading or rack loading, excuse me. Um, so, uh, I've actually been messing around. It'd be fun to see if you guys can come up with anything that, that's interesting where we say, if there's uh, a kelp bed present, we would, ex the, the criterion for having more kelp, more rack, excuse me, on the beach would be higher. Um, and, uh, so that, that might be a fun one to play with, uh, the location where we're doing the survey, um, comments, etc. Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. So there we go. So that is our, those are our um, uh, metrics.